Um, investors, they're, they're worried about trade a little bit. Uh, I get it. I understand. But, you know, as much as they're worried about what this means in the here and now, is it important that we think about what it means for the long term? I mean, no one has defended the American middle class. I mean, you think about for years how trade has benefited corporations. Really, as I've said over and over, at the expense of our workers. And while uh, I'm a red-blooded American capitalist, and I love capitalism, and I think it serves us the best, we need to think about capitalism in a global environment. In other words, if, if those with capital, the shareholders, the ones in control, the ones with the money are dictating all the decisions and have all the power, what is labor left with? I mean, you don't have anything if you don't have the people to actually make the stuff, right? But in the case of a global economy, there's always someone that will do it cheaper. There's always someone that will make it cheaper, that will work for less. And so constantly now you have corporations, shareholders going around the world searching for the cheapest form of labor. And it's important that we examine this at this point in time and think about, okay, if you're going to do that, then what is, the, what is the upside in this equation for America? Do we run the risk of sinking more and more into this hourglass economy, as I've described to you before, with those that have and those that do not have in a tiny, tiny middle class that continues to get squeezed because there are no jobs. Let's face it, not everybody can be a PhD. I'll just say it, okay? Not everybody's going to go to college. Not everybody's going to be an engineer or a mathematician, nor should everyone be. We need a diverse society with a diversity of workers. And we need those workers to be able to earn an honest living.